How's it going? I'm Alex. I'm Brendan. And Nick's on Zoom. Yeah, Nick's on Zoom. Nick. <laughs> but we are the uh, Smart Cup Holder Group. So, you know, this is what we have so far. Um, to start, it's just a self leveling cup holder. Uh, we also incorporated a latching mechanism using a, uh, using a distance sensor, but we're using a BNO055 to measure the yaw, pitch, and roll uh, that the device is experiencing. So the idea behind this was to have it on like a boat or a car or something of a frequently changing uh, like surface leveling. Uh, so by using this component, it's able to uh, correct itself and keep the drink level and prevent spilling. Yeah, so I'm just going to go through some of the materials we got. Um, like Alex said, we have our BNO mounted to one of our arms and then three 12-volt servo motors to power both uh, the pitch and roll arms and the claw. And we actually replaced the original servo that came with the claw, so we were like consistent all around, so all three are the same. And our distance sensor opens the claw for like a certain period of time. When you wave your hand in front of it, you can put your drink in there, it'll close automatically. And then inside our base, we have a 12-volt battery, which is what's powering the servos. And then we have a 12-volt to 5-volt step-down converter, which powers the TNT, which then produces 5 volts for the BNO and the distance sensor. And our PCB is in here. And then we have this switch to turn it on and off. But ideally, if it was installed in something like a boat, when the boat would turn on, it would be connected to the battery. And then it would turn on from there. So you wouldn't need the switch. And also in like real life application, like the way we kind of pictured it is that it looks really big and high off the ground here. But in reality, there would be like a sleeve in the dashboard that the base would just slide into. So realistically, all you would see is from the base up. So, and then I'll go over the next one. Um, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to walk through the block diagram a little bit. So um, as Brennan just went through all the parts, we'll just go through some of the connections and everything. So um, really the main thing that's um, powering this, we it was very important for us to decide we want this to be portable. So um, everything centers around this 12-volt um, battery that we have, and um, through that we were able to get different voltages, so mainly we needed 12 volts to power all of our servo motors, and we needed 5 volts for the TNC. So um, as you can see on the, uh, the block diagram, um, we have the uh, power from the 12 volts uh, and the 5 volts for the TNC and the servos, and then um, the TNC, so we thought about powering the BNO and the distance sensor straight from the battery as well. But um, we found it was much easier to just do this straight from the TNC, and we weren't drawing too much um, power from the TNC itself. So uh, this was the best way to do it. So as you can see, we have 3.3 uh, volts powering the BNO, and we are powering the distance sensor with 5 um, volts. And then um, the basic idea is, so we're going to get um, information. So as Alex said, we're getting um, yaw, pitch, and roll measurements from the BNO. And we don't actually need the yaw, we're only using pitch and roll. So um, the TNC will compute that data and then send the appropriate P, uh, PWM signal to the pitch and roll server, servo motors. Um, and then a similar thing happens with the distance sensor, we'll detect the distance, we'll do some computation on the TNC, and then um, we'll send a PWM signal to the, the claw to either open or close. So going on to some of our engineering challenges, um, something that we spent a lot of time on was actually 3D printing the parts. So as you can see, we started out with just plastic, which you know, is very flimsy. And we were trying to hold you know, something with weight. So if you remember last semester when we had our plastic demo set up, it, it did work. But when you put a cup on it with something in it, it would go down and start to tip and bend. And that just, that just wasn't what we wanted. So by using metal, uh, we used sheet metal from the Mechie lab in the basement of Link. And that actually is able to hold a lot more weight, and so that problem was solved. But we did end up spending a lot of time just designing the actual gimbal device. Um, something else we wanted to do was be able to keep all of our uh, components inside of the base. So we started out with this, which as you can see, just by expanding it an inch in uh, the Y and Z direction, we were able to include you know, the battery in there, our PCB, and the uh, DC converter, which was also relatively large uh, in comparison to everything else. Um, as Brendan mentioned, we have a 12 volt battery that is powering everything in the gimbal device. Um, so we wanted to just use one battery source. Uh, before we were using a uh, portable charger and the 12 volt battery, but we figured out how to power the Teensy uh, along with the servos from the same power source. So that just keeps it uh, much more compact and there's fewer components involved by doing that. Um, and as I said, just keeping it as small as possible, you know, we were able to keep it to the one battery source. So if we were to open this up, you would see it on the side. 
Um, it's truly not that much that's in there. We were able to keep it pretty, uh, pretty small, keep it all together. And then Nick's going to talk about the last one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, we ran into quite a few software challenges um, in this project. Um, and I think the main one was definitely the response. So um, say we'd get like a large um, bump or a large impulse on the device, you know, it'd have to change angles really quickly. Um, how we were doing it before was just, it was very, it was, we'd linearly step to, to, the, to, that, um, to that angle. So um, say the relative angle, so say the machine is tipped to um, 20 degrees right now, and the whole device is tilted 35 degrees the other way. How we do it is we'd step linearly. Every we have we have a f infinite for loop running, and um, we'd linearly step five units every time until we hit 35. So that'd be um, seven loops on it. But um, this was slow for very large, um, large uh, angle changes. So what we did was we um, mapped it to a. Um, we uh, went from linear to we mapped it to a cubic function. So now we can. Um, Larger impulses will have um, larger times, and as we get closer, these steps will get smaller and smaller. So it gets as um, close, it gets more precise, and um, thus more level. And what this also does is it eliminates. We had this problem where the device it would never find perfectly level. Um, it's very hard to get this to get it 100% level, and it ought it'd be making these tiny micro adjustments. So. Um, um, and then that would cause the machine to shake pretty violently. So, um, and so by implementing this cubic function, we'd uh, be able to add like a threshold in the middle um, very easily so that there's no steps. So it, we're not gonna make any adjustments if it's like an angle or two off. So that, um, that uh, gave us like a threshold so we'd uh, eliminate this problem. So those were kind of two of the main software challenges we ran into. So we're gonna turn it on. Another side note too, uh, I think it's kind of cool, is we found these cool metal servos that like okay. can actually tighten around the servo horns, which solved a lot of our problems too. So just right off the bat, it's able to self-level. And then we have our, let's get that going, there we go. Yeah. So it's a distance sensor, as soon as you put your hand in front of it, it's gonna open. So let's yeah, start with this, yeah. just right in. It'll close automatically. And then whatever it experiences, it's able to keep it pretty, pretty upright. And just like thinking back to when it was made out of plastic, um, it was being weighed down so much more. So you can see, you know, it's it's really not taking that much yeah. of a give when you put it in and out. Um, let's try something else. And also show like it doesn't crush the cup either if you want to try the cup out. But we did sure. realize that. Well, with time constraints, we didn't have enough time to re 3D print it, and we saw that the claw was mounted a little too high for a cup. But yeah. I think it's a lot more important that it doesn't completely crush it. So, because it would still work, it'll just be like kind of floating off the base there, but it's not going anywhere, which is the important part. And the way that the servo, uh, for the claw at least, opens and closes, it's uh, set to like 15 degrees. So, it's a pretty set amount. Uh, when yeah. we started testing it, uh, we had it going like 0 to 180 or something crazy, and that was burning out our servo motor because it was just putting too much constraint on it. Um, so we figured out by changing it only a certain amount of distance, it won't be doing that. Um, but yeah, it's able to keep it level. If we were to put water in here, it would work, but hang on. I'm going to try the can. Just throwing more weight in it. But yeah. Ooh, too much weight. But yeah. Yeah, that was one of our other problems. We definitely have a servo that could have used replacing, yeah. but it didn't come. Time. This guy ended up taking too much pressure. Yeah, our he's testing. the only original part yeah. we still have left, and uh, he like t sometimes it gets a little hot, and that's why whenever we move forward, sometimes it wouldn't come back up depending on the weight. But that was the only direction it wouldn't come back up from. So that was another one of our engineering challenges for sure. Yep. Definitely would have used. I think next time maybe some higher quality servo motors that can like definitely handle a lot more weight, so we wouldn't that wouldn't be like an issue we'd have to worry about. So. Any questions other than that? No. So, normally, the manufacturer will use DC motor than the servo motor. Mm -hmm. Why, in, like, what made you guys choose to use servo motor than the I think we were just more comfortable with them and more familiar with them and kind of 
honestly, it was just the first idea that came to mind. And I thought, like, the way we were going to design it, I just thought it was a better way to do it and have everything attached and be, like, as compact as possible. So. All right. Thank you, then.